Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm a rancher in Northeast Wyoming. As you may know, about a year ago, we broke away from the traditional cow-calf operation business plan of raising calves and selling them at auction to a direct-to-consumer business plan. So instead of selling, you guys are creeping up on me, instead of selling a calf at six months of age to a broker, then to a feedlot, then to a processor or packer, then a distributor, and then to a grocery store, we now take as many as of those steps as possible in our own hands. That, my friends, is vertical integration, and it might just have a bad rep. Stick around as we take a look at how vertical integration in our operation is forming and how other ranchers and farmers all over the world are doing the same thing. It's all coming up today on our Wyoming Life. Hi, guys. <laughs> Come here, Bambi. Bambi, come over here, say hi. Apparently, she's being shy. Bambi is one of our bottle calves and part of our breeding herd, but we're gonna talk about that coming up. There are a few terms uh, when associated with farming or ranching that have <laughs> a bad reputation. Of course, really, I guess that depends on who you talk to as there are many different interpretations and definitions, those can all be used. Uh, there's terms like factory farming, industrial agriculture, pesticide, methane, that's Bambi, steroids, artificial insemination, veal, branding, grazing, manure, antibiotics, dehorning, global warming, and of course, vertical integration. But there's also good words, family farms, low stress cattle handling, pasture management, heck, even free range and cage free are all those words that make us feel good about where our food comes from. And you're never going to see a beef label that says farmed on factory farms using antibiotics, steroids, and poor grazing techniques. That'd be a horrible marketing plan. But if a label said from our family owned farm where the animal was raised, fattened, and sold on the same ground it was born on, that might be a little bit better. And I'm sure that some ad agency out there could even dress it up a little. If we decipher that label, it basically says family owned and vertically integrated. Sounds like an oxymoron, like jumbo shrimp or working vacation, or even that one that always drives me crazy, plastic silverware. It's just plasticware. So, so what is vertical integration really? Let's look at the definition. Vertical integration, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is a combination in one company of two or more stages of production normally operated by separate companies. And it's been around in the food industry for a long, long time. Tyson Food began vertically integrating the chicken business after World War II. The demand for cheaper meat was on the rise and chicken was there to help. And Tyson was there to help by <laughs> raising chickens and grinding feed for local chicken farmers. Soon though, they figured out that the more steps of the operation that they had control of, from the breeding of the chickens, to the feeding, to the hatching of the eggs, to the processing and the selling of the meat, the more money they could make. By 1958, Tyson was managing millions of chickens and even paying chicken farmers to stop growing their own chickens in favor of theirs. We're talking about chickens, baby. This has nothing to do with cows. Well, it does. We'll get there. Tyson would deliver the chickens and pay the chicken farmers based on how much the chickens weighed when they picked them up a couple months later. And that's exactly how they operate today allowing the farmers to build the buildings, pay the taxes, and take pretty much all the risk while raising chickens for them. Even offering chicken farmers loans to be able to build those buildings. It's not just chicken companies though. Companies like Smithfield who processed pigs saw what Tyson was doing and took the same business model, controlling and owning a large share of every animal they process. And yes, even in the cattle industry, that's right, Bambi, sorry about that, vertical integration is in place by large companies, the largest being JBS. There's Walmart, even Whole Foods are contracting with cattle producers before the cattle are even born, sometimes owning a controlling interest in the herds, dictating feed, pasture rotations, and even medication given the animals. 
Now, has our food gone the way of Henry Ford's Model T factory? Is it just a big assembly line? One of the big factories where at the end, out comes the final product? Unfortunately, the answer to that question is yes. Uh, a majority of food, and especially meat that you find in your grocery store, is raised pretty much the same way. It keeps prices down for the consumer, and more importantly, it keeps profits up for the producers. Not producers like us out here with the cows, we're talking about producers like Tyson, Cargill, and JBS. Producers with board members and CEOs and bonus programs in the millions of dollars. Hi. She said, pay attention to me. But what can we do? Well, along with the thousands of other farmers and ranchers that have decided to do exactly what we're doing, <laughs> we're going to take control of our own product. Back in the day, if you wanted to... Hi, hello. I know, you want attention. Back in the day, if you wanted to have chicken for dinner, I guess you went to your chicken coop and you got one. And if you didn't have a chicken coop, maybe your neighbor did. And you could buy one from him or maybe even trade for it. It was the American way before we needed American profits. We are a family owned, vertically integrated ranch. Not every step of getting meat from the ranch to your door happens right here on the ranch, but a majority of it does. Some ranches like us offer boxed beef, meaning you can order select cuts of meat from our website and get it sent directly to your door. Some might sell halves and holes where you get the whole cow or a good portion of it and stock up your freezer. Other ranchers might actually raise cattle on their own ranch, feed them on their own feedlots until they're big enough to supply a local grocery store or even a small chain of restaurants. However it works, when a farmer ranch takes it upon themselves to do more than just one stage of a production, that's vertical integration. And when it's done by what I like to call frontline producers, it helps keep them and their businesses running. By the way, the board members that call themselves producers, they're way back in the safe zone, well removed from the battlefield where a majority of the risks are actually taken. All right, so what are the steps of vertical integration for us. Today, we're going to go and do one of those steps, which is distribution. But a lot has to happen for us to get even this far. The first step in our vertically integrated ranch is the mom. Just like this one right here. We're talking about you now. You want to pay attention? <laughs> These guys live on the ranch their whole lives, and their job is to be spoiled. You can't tell they're spoiled. They get food, they get treats, and they get land. Lots of it to roam around and do whatever they would do naturally, which is have babies. Those calves are the lifeblood of the ranch. And where in a normal cow-calf operation, they would actually leave to begin their journey to your plate by going to a large commercial feedlot. Here, they stay right here. We bring them to our own backgrounding herd, and that's a herd uh, they're in from weaning until they enter our feedlot. Their job at that point is to gain a little bit of weight, grow up a little. And elsewhere on the ranch, their moms go to repeat the cycle. And when those cows are about 800 pounds, they enter our feedlot. And they stay there for about four months, gaining weight and producing fat and marbling in the meat. Up until this point, these young cows have never left the ranch, where in a typical commercial system, they could have been moved to feedlots and all kinds of different places up to, I don't know, four or five times. At about 14 to 15 months of age, it's time for them to move for their first time from the ranch. This is where we're unable to continue in the production of meat from these animals. They go off to a USDA certified and expected processing and packing facility but nothing like a large commercial processor making millions of pounds of meat per day. This processor is a small processor, bringing in only a few cows per week and doing the processing and packing exactly how we would like it. And we also like supporting local business, so it helps out twofold. Once the animal is packaged, we have completed a majority of our vertical integration steps. We've raised the, the mom of the animal. <laughs> We've raised the animal itself. We fed it, we fattened it, and we transported it to processing. Once processing and packaging is done, it's time for what, well, what I've come out here today to do, and that is distribution. To do that, we gotta head to the truck. And that 
distribution is super simple. Uh, it's basically the process of getting the meat from the processor and the packager to the store. So it's kind of like, it's like a middleman, right? So it's like a truck driver, um, a truck driving company. A lot of times in vertical integration, you'll see the, uh, the truck that's delivering the meat is actually a, well, for our example, a Tyson truck delivering chicken. For me, it's our truck delivering meat directly back to the farm store in our freezers and going towards online sales and in-person sales there in the farm store. So we have to drive to Sturgis, South Dakota, where we're gonna be picking up beef and jerky today, bringing it back to the ranch so we can put it away and wait for it to sell. Sturgis, South Dakota is our closest processor. They're about two hours away, so about a four hour trip today uh, and whatever time it takes to load up. And of course, unloading takes time as well. Uh, we process at a USDA inspected facility and that's so that we can ship all over the US. All 50 states can receive our products, whether they're beef jerky or frozen beef or pork. We're not picking up pork today, we're just getting beef, but um, we do still have some pork in the freezer, so that's a good thing. A um, little bit of a trip, but worth it to us. Uh, you know, we could go with a bigger processor, but Sturgis really does a limited amount of cows per week. Um, we're probably one of their biggest customers, and uh, we're proud to, to work with them and we work with the people there that we can actually um, get exactly what we need. We're going to meet some of those people probably when we get there, but for now, it's just a, a little bit of a trip for me and just a second or two for you. And here we are arriving in Sturgis, South Dakota, home of the famous Sturgis Motorcycle Rally, which takes place one week out of the year, makes this whole town famous. But the other 51 weeks of the year, uh, it's hard to, it's sometimes easy to forget that uh, Sturgis is a big ranching community. There's a lot of ranches around here, a lot of farms, and uh, just like that hay truck, like stuff's got to get done. So. Obviously nice to have a processor that is so close and also they're taking care of our packaging. So kind of a two birds and one stone type of thing. We're gonna head on in, take a look around. Uh, hopefully we can find our beef jerky and our beef, frozen beef. Get it all loaded up with no problem and out the door. Hi there, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good. <laughs> All right, so we're just waiting for him to open up the uh, the, the door here so we can start loading into our trailer. I did have to go inside. Wrote a check for $14,592 and some odd cents. And that's the second half of the payment for all this jerky and meat that we're gonna pick up today before it goes on sale on the website. guys there's uh 12 cows three steers in here and it's all ready to go back home like i said 15,000 some odd dollars i can't remember what it was now because i think i might have had a minor stroke but that is really just the the uh, packaging and processing fee there's no slaughter fees or anything else in there yet so whew, that loadout was a lot of work. I have no idea how many pounds of what we have back here, but the great thing is here soon, it's all gonna be on the website and uh, you guys will know exactly what we've got. So I'm gonna sneak on out of here. Look at this, I've even gotten the back seat 
we are full full the back seat is full of jerky that's probably going to collapse on me we are very full and it's time to go home Right back there's the farm store where the next step of vertical integration comes into play but for now we have to get all this stuff unloaded put in freezers and put away for now this is where all the beef and stuff is going to get stored all these freezers and to help us is Aaron hi I spent a lot of money I know you did sorry it is what it is okay <laughs> And also to help us out, our friend Carrie, who's wearing a really cool FBN shirt, which really has nothing to do with this, but that's okay, I like your sweatshirt. Thank you. All right, so we are gonna start unloading all that uh, frozen beef that we had in the back. To putting away all of the steaks and roasts and all that kind of good stuff. We have boxes of ground beef. Ground beef we store over here in the barn because we ran out of room in other freezers, ran out of wall space and all kinds of other things. So these freezers are all set aside for ground beef, mostly. We do have some dog bones too, but uh, first we're gonna try to find somewhere to show all this ground beef. These boxes, um, average weight is what? About 50, well, some of them are 24 pounds. No, those are dog bones, never mind. Bones, 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 lots of bones. About 50 pounds a piece uh, for the hamburger. We're gonna see how many we can squeeze it. with the 350 pounds of hamburger, we also have uh, six, seven, eight boxes here of dog bones. Now these are big on the website too. Um, people buy these, you know, to feed their dogs or some people use them for soup bones, all that kind of good stuff. So I'm not quite sure where we're gonna put these yet. I've got a little bit of room here and there, but I'm just gonna leave them here in the shop for right now. We're gonna head back over to the garage uh, where Aaron and Carrie are putting away everything else. Just got all the beef jerky unloaded. 
put in beef jerky and beef sticks. It's all on the website, ready to go. And we have a brand new flavor uh, that's new for this year. It's called Gigawatt Hot, and we're gonna all try it and see really how hot it is. This is the first taste test. We didn't get a chance to taste this ahead of time, right? No. So here is the label. This is uh, Gigawatt Hot. It's supposed to be super spicy, right? So I would guess from the name. <laughs> uh, well, you never know. <laughs> All right. Is there three pieces in here? I don't know how many pieces are in there. I don't That's know. a lot. I don't want this much. I'm going to touch your beef stick. That's fine. <laughs> wow, Oops. that one's beans. All right. Mm. Oh, it's really soft. Super soft. Really soft. Wow. That's really good. It's not very It's spicy. really good, but it's not very hot. No. Mm? Is it coming to you? It builds a little bit. Maybe but it's tomorrow. not gigawatt. No. It's still good. It is really good though. It's really, really moist. Uh-huh. So we have muscle jerky back in stock. Which we haven't had for like a year. What's the difference between a beef steak and muscle jerky? It comes from a different part of the animal. Long lean cuts of meat that they can cut strips. Beef steaks are from everything else. And it's ground and shaped. That's why it's a like extruded? Yeah. Okay. That's why it's a stick. And only in four and a half ounce yeah. packages, right? Yeah. So there's the jerky. Yeah, we had some old labels that we were able to use, but we actually um, got all new labels and from a different company. And uh, so it was a different process to get labels done and had to pay for labels. And we kind of went simpler this year. And then next year we'll add back in some other sizes and more flavors and stuff. But That's definitely muscle jerky. Yeah. Do you want to show them what it looks like? It looks like muscle jerky. Well, that's this thick. <laughs> if you like jerky. really chewy, like if you want something to chew on, mm, it's really tender though. Like, it's good. It has a good moisture content. Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, yeah. raw hide. Uh uh. No. Mm. Office. All right. So that's the end of the distribution process of vertical integration. Now we move on to the store after I finish this. This is distribution? Mm -hmm. We haven't distributed anything yet. Distribution <laughs> goes from the packer and the, and the, pack, and the packaging mm. to the store. Okay. And then the store sells it to the public. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, jerky for dinner. <laughs> And here it is, the final stage of our vertical integration from the moms in the field to the farm store. It's here in the farm store that we can take all of our hard work and take it all the way to you, to the consumer, to the one that gets to eat the beef and the pork and even the chicken or the vegetables or the jerky, the ice cream whatever it may be. We want to make sure that we are giving you guys exactly what you need. It's what the ranch is all about now. And it's what thousands of other ranchers and farmers are doing. Now, not everybody's doing it. Not every farmer or rancher is doing it. Some people are, and I, and I don't blame them. They, they are stuck in the, the system where you have to sell calves at auction. I always encourage those, those fam farmers and ranchers when I meet them to try to finish a steer even if it's just for yourself um, there's nothing like eating something directly from the ranch and there's probably people that'll comment below who have ordered beef or pork from us who will tell you the same thing none of those are paid endorsements in fact oddly enough they pay us Vertical integration has allowed us to control our product to control our industry every single one I can look at I can look at a package here and you know what's crazy about this is on this packaging it actually tells me what cow that is right there see a10 green if I can move this the right direction that's a part of his tail and I'm super proud to be able to offer it to you vertical integration is not a dirty word although there are plenty of other dirty words I know most of them, but that's not one of them. 
Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe, follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. And if you're interested in supporting the ranch, taking home a little piece for yourself, new beef jerky, new flavors of beef jerky uh, is in stock. You just saw us unload it. Beef, pork, it's all on our website, rwymanglife.com. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.